Hello. My name is Jeremy Schwartz, and I'm a birder. It's, it's taken me nearly a year to be able to say that comfortably in front of people, but I have finally come to terms with this birding life. It's, it's not always been this way, though. Once, I could walk down the street with my wife and not stop mid-sentence, craning my neck to see what bird just flew by or landed in a tree. Once, I would have never thought it even remotely possible to think of standing at the base of a tree, looking up and making a strange psh, 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 psh sound in hopes of attracting small songbirds. But I'm not really here to talk about me. I'm here to share my love of birds and birding with all of you and share how you too can get out into the world and enjoy these lovely animals. I pitched this talk as four signs your friend or loved one is a birder. But I'd also like to meld it into four simple ways each and every one of you can incorporate a greater appreciation and a greater understanding of birds and the natural world into your daily lives. So, without much further ado, let's get started. Sign number one, look, up in that tree. I know I've developed a tendency of stopping whatever I'm doing while on a walk or even at work looking out my office window to try to see what bird just flew by or landed in a nearby tree. And it's a pretty hard habit to break since birds are pretty much everywhere. I mean, think about it. Well, when's the last time you saw a reptile or a mammal in the wild or in your everyday life? Probably not too recently. But a bird? You probably saw some on the way to the theater this evening. Um, I'm sure there are uh, crows and pigeons stalking the sidewalks outside right now. A report I found said that 20% of the world's 8,000 or so bird species live and breed in cities just like Seattle. So what I'm getting to here is Try to cut your friend or loved one some slack if they ever stop mid-sentence while you're walking somewhere to try to see a bird that just flew by or landed in a tree. And definitely, don't be afraid to look yourself. You never know what you might see. Sign number two, gone pishin'. Psh, 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 psh. That sound, if you can believe it, can be like catnip or birdnip, I guess it would be, to all sorts of small songbirds because they're pretty curious little things and want to see what that weird noise is can be especially attractive to birds like this. This is a black-capped chickadee. It's a cute little thing, right? It can be a special kind of thrill to be in a park or a wooded area, make this sound near a stand of trees, and have all sorts of little songbirds come over to investigate. But it should be done sparingly, because any human interaction can stress birds out as it takes them out of their natural routine. So a rule of thumb I have is to stop pishing as soon as a bird comes over to investigate. Then just let them get back to their business. Sign three. Shh. I know I've had to apologize to more than a few friends for shushing them while on a walk to try to hear a distant bird song better. I've even shushed my wife, if you can believe it, and that really didn't end too well for me. But it can't, uh, being quiet and standing still if in a park or, or a wooded area can have its benefits. For one, um, being quiet can allow birds in the area to get back to their natural routine, especially if they, a big clumsy human just walked by and they had to shut up. Um, my second one is um, the keeping, keeping still can make even the smallest bird movement stand out all the more. So don't take it personally if a bird friend ever shushes you. You might just learn something. Finally, sign number four. Actually, it's called... Uh, we birders mean the best when we stubbornly correct bird names, either to your faces or behind your backs. Because when it comes right down to it, we birders are just ridiculously nerdy and downright and just ridiculously excited about these animals and want to tell as many people as we can about them. We revel in the minutia of bird facts and figures and want to share them with the world. Plus, these little trivia bits are great for winning bar bets with. One of my favorites of these involves this bird right here. Can anyone tell me what it is? If you're whispering or saying out loud, seagull, you are absolutely 100% wrong. There's actually no such thing as a seagull, technically. There are numerous different types of gulls in the world, and this one right here is a glaucus wing gull, one you're pretty likely to see flying around downtown Seattle or over the waterfront. There. Aren't you just glad I, I straightened that up? I know I am. So, <laughs> I'd like to end here by saying 
Thank you to all of you for allowing me to devote these last five minutes to birds. And if you only take one thing away from my talk, make it be, let it be this. There's no such thing as a seagull. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.